Beneath the land and sea, hidden from sight, lie the veins of our modern world, connecting nations, powering dreams. But like any system, with care and innovation, they endure. By turning challenges into opportunities, everything we create and use holds the potential for renewal and transformation. So Motic Marine recovers and recycles out-of-service telecommunication cables from the seabed. We have a small fleet of uh, cable recovery vessels, specifically uh, customized for that purpose. And we recover cables up to depths of around 6,700 meters. Motic Marine is quite a diverse company with lots of different divisions. Uh, essentially, one of them being cable acquisition at the start of the journey. So ultimately, to actually acquire a cable is quite a complex uh, process and typically we'll find that our cable acquisition team based in Europe, they will begin their journey of understanding the geographic space around where we're currently working, what cable makes the most sense to physically target, identify it, and essentially the team, many, many months of hard work will go out and physically do all the administration involved in trying to locate, uh, get all the right paperwork, speak to the clients, negotiations, and essentially they will close the cable. So we begin our journey with ultimately our projects department, which will gear themselves accordingly to specification of the cable. Between projects and the research department, they will come up with solutions to maximize on these cables to get every last piece. We have a policy of, of zero to waste in the facility. Projects at this stage will ultimately come up with a concept, a design, make some modifications of machinery. The cable will follow part of the system, a track into our primary marine processing floors, okay, with the implementation of machinery that's been developed and designed to process that cable. And that's where it all begins, because it's not as simple as just stripping the cable into its multiple elements and then taking it to market. The, the journey only begins at that stage. The first product to break is polyethylene. The second product to break is copper, and the third product to break is steel, predominantly. This makes up the core. There are some other byproducts of the process. And in doing so, polyethylene that's removed goes into extrusion to become a pellet. Copper goes for further refinement, goes through granulation processes, segregation processes of copolymer, and then ultimately gets cast into different metallic forms, ingots, anodes, uh, and then goes for further metallurgical treatment through chemistry to make a final product that's ready for industry. The steel pretty much follows the, the same route. Um, it ends up in different forms, whether it's bullets going back into industry for round bar. Um, but essentially by the time we've done, we can track that cable back 99.9% .9 of its uh, input value into the factory, into products. Mithi Green has recovered and recycled well over 100,000 kilometers of cable in the last 15 years, which is enough to go around the globe around two and a half times. Mithi Green is trying to minimize the, um, the impact on the environment and the seafloor by putting a lot of effort in each recovery project, by planning, by using the right software, the right people. Um, if needed, we work closely together with environmental agencies or uh, governments uh, sensitive areas, like for a coral reef, are always being avoided. So the basic concepts of circular economy is about repurposing or reusing, recycling, reducing waste, and at the end, uh, potentially redesigning products. In our business, because we are focused on recycling and providing solutions, reusing products, etc., we've managed to also instill that in our normal day-to-day -day, because it's one thing taking someone else's waste and recycling that but you also have to look inward and ask yourself am i being responsible in my own business our marine operations team is based in the netherlands and by far our biggest team is our land-based processing team um, these are the guys who really find the solutions for uh, handling these complex materials trading them out 
etc. But the real heroes in this business is probably the crew on the ship going out every day on the high seas and recovering these cables. During our recovery operations, we have several challenges. One of them is, for example, the weather. Um, at a certain wind force, we cannot do our work anymore. This counts for shore end removals, but also for deep sea recovering. Um, other challenges we face is, for example, that we work around the globe, um, yeah, which can uh, impact um, the port where we discharge, where we work. We have to deal with local rules as well, um, which is also a big challenge, and different cultures as well. The fleet that we currently have is the Anique, the Layla, and the Grace. The vessel gets laden full of cable from part of the recovery process, which can take anything between 30 and 120 days. Um, once she's full of cable, she will sail to the nearest port um, where a strategic depot is established, part of the transshipment process. Um, sweating the asset is, is pretty essential in this process to, to effectively keep the vessel itself at work. So immediately we, we discharge as quick as possible in a timely fashion, consolidate the cables in that port, that vessel goes back to sea and that cable ultimately then gets transshipped to the nearest facility that's appropriate to processing that type of material. Our experience has taught us that doing the right things for the right reasons usually pays off in the long term. It often comes with some pain in the short term um, and that's where, that's where the crux of it lies. But really always asking yourself is are you doing what you're doing for the right reasons?